Hi, welcome to another ArcGIS tutorial. Today I'm going to show you a very cool trick that you guys can do with ArcGIS and ArcScene. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you uh, a hypothetical flood inundation scenario simulation uh, using both ArcMap and ArcGIS. Now as you can see I have already uh, loaded up my DEM into my ArcMap interface. Uh, this is actually a pretty uh, high resolution DEM. A DEM with a pixel resolution of about 1 meter by 1 meter. So in order to do this you need to activate the 3D Analyst option of ArcGIS. Now if you go to Customize and Extensions, over here you can see this option of 3D Analyst. Just make sure that you have checked this box because uh, in order to use the 3D functionalities it's important that you have enabled this option. After that you can just right click somewhere over here and activate this 3D Analyst toolbox. Just going to drag this and drop it over here and from here you can actually lo launch ArcScene. So I'm going to do that. Okay, now you can see that ArcScene is already loaded. Now I'm going to go to Catalog and I'm going to navigate to the place where I have uh, saved that the raster. I'm just going to drag it and drop it over here. All right now you can see that uh, we can sort of visualize it in a in the form of a plane. And the next step that you need to do is you need to go over here and go to properties and under the tab base heights select floating on a custom surface and click apply and it can take a few minutes to actually uh, do the processing and click OK Alright, as you can see nothing much happened. I'm also going to change the color scheme of this raster to be something uh, something like this. And the next step, you have to go to the scene layers and go to scene properties. And over here, now we are going to play around with this vertical exaggeration. So if I select maybe around 5 and click apply. Now you can see that the plane got uh, vertically exaggerated a little bit uh, in terms of Z values. But as you can see over here, but you can still see that it was not that significant. So I'm just going to go ahead to scene properties again. And I'm going to change the vertical exaggeration to be something around let's say uh, 30. The local mountains sort of uh, got popped up a little bit. I'm just going to maybe increase it a little bit more to be about let's say 50. Okay, okay. Now the next step is actually to create another layer, which I'm going to call as the water level layer. Now I'm going to go back to my ArcMap interface. I'm, I'm what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to create another raster. So in order to do that, first I'm going to actually create a polygon and then later on I'm going to convert that polygon into a raster. So let's go ahead and create a polygon. Uh, I will create the polygon in the same folder. I'm going to name this polygon as water level. It's going to be a polygon. And my coordinate system right now it's Lambert nineteen seventy two because this rust is actually corresponding to uh, some area in Belgium. So I'm going to click OK and Click OK over here. I'm going to go to Editor and start editing. What I'm going to edit is my water level polygon. Uh, 
All right, I'm going to create a rectangle which is almost similar in terms of its size to this original raster. Okay, I can go ahead and stop editing and save my edits. Now, the main purpose of actually creating this particular plane or this particular polygon is if I go back to my arc scene, you can see that uh, over here, if I look at the legend, my lowest point is 14.99 meters above the mean sea level. So what I'm actually going to do over here is I'm going to create this plane to be below 14.99 meters, let's say around 14.5 meters. And through an animation, I'm going to actually raise up this water level layer so that it actually looks like it's inundating the whole area. That's basically the principle behind this uh, this tutorial. So I'm going to go back to ArcMap, keeping in mind that the lowest point over here is 14.99, and I'm going to convert this polygon into a raster which has a uniform value of let's say 14.5. I just need the value to be less than 14.99. So in order to do that, if you open the attributes table of the water level over here. Okay, I'm going to create a new column and I'm going to name this as water level WL and the data type I'm going to keep it as float. Okay, now I can start editing in order to specify over here that my water level is 14.5 meters above the mean sea level. Okay, I can now stop editing and save my edits. And now simply using the search panel over here, I'm going to search polygon to raster. Okay, you can use this tool from there. And as the input features, now I'm going to specify as my water level. And the value field, if you open the attributes table, now you can see actually the the value that I need my raster to be is 14.5 across the whole raster uniform value and that's under WL over here. So I'm going to select WL over here and the rest I'm going to just leave it as it is except for this one where I'm going to actually specify the, the location where I'm going to save this raster called WL. Now click OK. Now you can see we have a new raster which has a uniform value of 14.5. So I'm going to go back to arc scene and if I go to catalog and refresh my folder, you can see we have a new raster called water level. I'm going to drag this and drop it over here. And now as we would expect it to be, it just got placed where the elevation of that location happens to be 14.5 meters above the mean sea level. I'm also going to change the appearance of this appearance of this raster by using a unique value. Probably I can use a color like this. Alright, now you can see this is actually the layer that I'm going to use as my water level layer. Now the next step is to right click over here and go to animation and under this animation tab go to animation manager. Now from here make sure that you are in the keyframes tab and you have selected a layer as the key keyframes of type and go to create over here and as the type select layer and as your source object select water level and click new over here all right now you're going to 
create a different keyframes. I'm going to create about let's say 10 to 12 keyframes. So you can create one uh, keyframe by just clicking create over here. I can see you can go up to as many keyframes as you would like to have, but I'm going to stop at uh, let's say 12. Then you can close it over here. Now the translation Z is the place where you can specify how fast actually your water level uh, layer is going to rise up. Uh, so let's say if I if I were to start from 14.5, the second keyframe, I would say that I I want it to be at around let's say 15, and the next one uh, I I might go about two to three increments, 17 maybe 22 25 28 30 32 34 36 let's say I would stop at around uh, be 38 okay so this 38 actually refers to to the highest level that your water level would actually rise up so I'm just going to close this over here and then you can go to open animation controls and go to options and by duration maybe you can set this to be about 20 seconds or 15 seconds and the play mode uh, I'm going to select loop forward and reverse that means it's going to actually rise up and also come back down again all right now you can close it I'm going to zoom this a little bit to be something like this so that once the water level rises up you can actually see that clearly Yeah, I think something like this would be fine. And then you can just go ahead and click play. And you can see the when the water level rises up, it sort of shows that your area is getting inundated. And now it's going back. If you would like for the process to happen a little bit slower, maybe you can increase the duration to be about 20 seconds. You can play again. Now before I wrap up this tutorial, I would like to uh, just mention one thing. Because at the beginning of this tutorial, I told you that uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you a simulation of a flat inundation but uh, in, in a perspective of a hydraulics engineer or a water resources engineer this is actually not really an accurate uh, representation of a flat inundation this is sort of under a hypothetical assumption that if your if if the boundaries of your DEM has been covered by let's say walls or something and if you were to just pour water onto your DEM so this is actually how the inundation would look like but if it were to be a real flood inundation you have to take into account uh, things such as uh, river hydraulics and floodplain hydrodynamics things like that and if you were to actually do a proper flood, uh, flood inundation simulation you have to use uh, hydrodynamic softwares like uh, HECRAS or probably you can use another advanced uh, software like uh, Mike Levin coupled with a uh, mic 21 that's actually a software package from uh, Danish Hydraulic Institute which is uh, used quite frequently for flood related projects so that's something to keep in mind uh, I would actually like to name this tutorial as a cool trick that you can do in order to simulate a hypothetical uh, flood inundation scenario so if you have any questions regarding this uh, you can actually comment them down below 
and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you would like to see more interesting GIS related tutorials like this you can indeed consider subscribing and and you will be able to see very interesting GIS tutorials almost every day so thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one